You're listening to Tabletop Arcanum, a podcast dedicated to learning and exploring the hobby of tabletop gaming. Your hosts are Justin Taylor and Richard Geese, so sit back and relax as we talk, discuss, and joke our way through the hobby we love so much. Burgle your way to Victory and Clank, the deck-building adventure game. Sneak into Dragon Keep to steal precious artifacts. Delve deeper to find more valuable loot. Expand your deck and watch your abilities grow. One false step and clank! Careless noise draws the dragon's attention and each artifact stolen increases its rage. To enjoy the plunder, you must escape the depths alive. Welcome to Tabletop Arcane. This is Justin and I'll be talking to you about Clank from Renegade Studios and Dire Wolf. This was designed by Paul Denon. Plays 2 to 4 players, 30 to 60 minutes, ages 12 and up. MSRP is $60. Now, Clank is a deck building adventure game as it kind of describes itself. One of the core mechanics is you, every player starts with a core set of cards and you will collect more, enhance the deck, possibly get rid of some cards. And all the idea is you're moving your meeple around the board to try to get more loot. And the more loot you get is essentially victory points. And it's a push your luck mechanic in that sense is the dragon is stirring and each major artifact stolen gets a little bit more of an angry dragon and eventually you will not avoid its wrath you can do a little bit of player versus player by stealing things in front of other players but you mainly add noise of the player's color to the dragon pull bag which then draws the attention to that player so clink is a very interesting deck building game takes that core deck building mechanic turns it on a very competitive edge with that push your luck mechanic so let's talk about first impressions when i first got clank it was in kind of the height of my deck building entertainment so i had played games like legendary i believe harry potter hogwarts battle was also out at the time when i got clank i don't remember picking up clank right away but it was one of those like oh this is not the deck builder game let's see what we got and being more competitive i do enjoy it for that and i do enjoy the push your luck mechanic of how much treasure do you think you can get away with and still get out because the more valuable stuff is deeper down and the deeper you go the more you risk one other thing i do want to say first impressions of the game i like the theme and the tongue-in-cheek of it it doesn't try to take itself too seriously yes there's a dragon yes it's a pretty tired fantasy theme but the same token that's kind of the point you kind of have a theme that you can riff on quite a bit so let's dive into some of those details let's talk about first the things that clink does well it keeps your deck building mechanics relatively simple they don't try to overcomplicate anything in this one other thing is the art throughout Clank and the layout of the cards is very easy to understand. You have your costs in one corner, you have your dangers in another, you have your skill icons that it can possibly grant you, and things of that nature, as well as nice layout for art, very clear language on most of the cards. All in all, I really do enjoy Clank for simplicity. It doesn't try to overcomplicate itself. That being said, after a few plays of Clank, you may be looking for something a little bit more challenging because it is on the lighter side of a deck building game like this. Now, another nice thing it does do well is it does a lot of references and tongue in cheek stuff to your higher fantasy tropes. So you can add a singing sword to your deck. There's dragon shines and watchers, which kind of look like beholders with tentacles. Companions are going to be things like treasure hunters and other standard adventuring companions. Your monsters are going to be very typical ogres, kobolds, and things of that nature. Most of the items that you're going to get are going to get things like bracers of agility, a dragon's eye, and all those sorts of atypical fancy things. Some of them are like D&D references, but nothing really super specific. So it's got the nice light theme and the theme kind of carries throughout what you're doing because as you have things that make noise, you're going to add more clink to the dragon. And then there are certain things like sneaking, which will remove clink from it. One other thing I do like to call out on that is you do get some weird things like Mr. Whiskers, the cat companion, who might or may not be the dragon's pet or, you know, the mountain king, very much a hobbit reference. Overall, Clink does well in that you need to learn how to push your luck and you need to learn how to do a deck building game. Some of the limitations and opportunities I think Clink has is it is capped at four players. I do feel like the game could probably support one or two more. 
They do have expansions that keep some of it fresh, but they don't really add extra player count. And I think that could have been something that could have been pushed a little bit, maybe up to six. There isn't a lot of variety in the deck building itself. It lends itself to one of the more critical things that most deck builders, I say this is an important strategy in general, but it feels like this might be the only strategy in Clank is load your deck with cards that draw you extra cards because the more cards you get to draw on a turn, the more cards you get to play, which means the more actions and more things you get to do in a single turn. That's one of those key abilities within a game that is a quote unquote deck builder. One of the other things that I think Clank can do a little bit better is the push your luck mechanic isn't terrible but once you've played a few rounds you kind of know where that limit is unless you have other players trying to push that limit it's pretty easy to know i have enough to win and they're probably too deep for them to actually escape with the loot that they have and this is where i do suggest play it a few times look at some of the other options as far as expansions go to change up the map now, the core game does come with two sides of a map and the kind of a basic and a man side, which changes the layout a little bit, but it doesn't do enough to really add the variety to the game that I would be hoping for on this one. While it is a good gateway game, it doesn't have a lot of staying power, I feel. One of the other big things on Clank is you do have artifacts, major secrets, and minor secrets, and those are spread out pretty well, but there's only so many in a game and so many that you get to use that you kind of know which ones are where and what you want to do. The big thing is you want to know about how much Clank you have in the dragon's bag at any given time, because that's what's going to penalize you in the game. So using things like Sneak to remove that Clank is very useful. Adding Clank for other players is very powerful as well. Ultimately, that can all be done by doing card draw. And that's where I feel it falls a little flat after a few plays. The MSRP for Clank is $60, and I feel it's a little overpriced based on the amount of replayability you get out of it. Of course, this is the core game and you need it for the expansion. So if you start adding expansions, ideally your ticket goes up, but you get a lot more variety out of it, which makes it a little bit better. They do have some nice components, the wooden clink cubes for every player color. The cardboard is actually not the super thick, like three millimeter cardboard, but it's a good substantial cardboard. And you do get a ton of cards in your standard playing card size for this as well. I will say the insert is nice enough to have room for if you want to sleeve cards, which I do usually recommend on deck builders because your core 10 cards will start wearing more than the rest of the cards that get mixed into your deck later on in the game because you're always starting with those 10 cards. So that wear and tear is a little uneven in deck builders. Uh, the board itself is nice. The insert itself is one of the nicer ones as it kind of has its own storage solution all built in. So I do like it for that, but I do feel 60 might be a little bit overpriced for it. It definitely feels more of a 40 to $50 game compared to other games in that $60 range and comparing other games in that $40 range. So that would be the Tabletop Arcanum's opinion of Clank, the deck building adventure game. We will be doing a review of Clank in Space as well. So if you want to hear the differences between Clank and Clank in Space, other than one's fantasy and one's sci-fi, take a listen to that review. As always, thank you for listening. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Make sure you drop that like, follow, subscribe, comment, whatever it is, and happy gaming. You've been listening to Tabletop Arcanum, produced by Justin Taylor. This episode is hosted by Justin Taylor. Mixing and editing by Richard Geese. Original theme by Paul Moore and Isaac Gilbert. Check the description for this episode's featured background music. You can follow us on most social media platforms. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. And leave us a review if you would. As always, thanks for listening. Thank you.